Hi, hello everyone. This is Father Krishna. Welcome to Canada Krishna YouTube channel. So today it's going to be really special, uh, uh, guys, because uh, uh, we have somebody who is already working in Canada in Deloitte. So it's uh, it's really tough to interview with such kind of people. So please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. So in this video, we are going to ask all the questions. We are going to have an interview with him uh, to know more about him and how he got the job and what he used to do as a student here. So all those details will be covered in uh, this video. So stay tuned till the end. Uh, yeah, I'll be leaving his details as well uh, on LinkedIn details so that he, you can reach out to him if at all you have any doubts. Let's start our video today. So he is already working here in Canada. So I felt like uh, getting somebody who is working in Canada is much better. Uh, so hi, K, thanks for coming. It's a pleasure to, you know, like uh, have a video with you because uh, it's tough to catch somebody who is in the, in the, in the industry and, you know, and like, in the video with them so thanks for coming uh, thanks for having me yeah so since uh, uh you know i just want to start from your background right like what you used to do or uh, back in your home country and uh, like what made you come to canada and what is the transition all this stuff can you please explain a bit about your background? yeah sure no problem so i am an engineer by trade so i completed my bachelor's degree in chemical engineering mm -hmm. in ghana mm -hmm. And so during my degree, I had a chance to kind of finish. I completed an internship in mining and a bit in oil and gas as well. Okay. So after graduating, I worked with the um, regulatory body in Ghana for a year. And I did not find a role very fulfilling. So I felt like I wanted to kind of upskill and kind of branch into something else and specialize to be more precise. So I started looking into um, different options for potential master's degree. Okay. So because of my chemical engineer, but I definitely wanted to do something within engineering. So initially I was considering mining oil and gas. And then I eventually ended up going with oil and gas, which is how I ended up applying to Nomar University and Cornell as I've said. Is there any reason for a plant in mind or so with oil and gas, there is not a lot of options for you out there. Okay. So even in terms of globally there is Australia, US, uh, and a few programs going in Europe where you can get a good, in the UK, where you can get good oil and gas programs. And then within Canada, there's even more limited options where you have either on the West Coast or the East Coast. So you're either going to Memorial University or you're going to University of Calgary, University of Alberta, University of Regina, I believe, West on. But yeah, not a whole lot of options. Okay. And mine was like the top contender in that sense that like it's pretty cheap, right? It's like mm -hmm. compared to the others, it's like relatively more like affordable. Yeah. Which is made it a bit of a no-brainer for me. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, uh, let's get into the second one. So I was asking about, you know, uh, this is a timeline. Like how, when did you apply for your interview? Usually when I was applying from India, what was it? We used to have a GSE, which is a guaranteed investment certificate, which means they need to invest some money and uh, the money is going to be given to you back. But just to make sure that, uh, like, if at all you're coming as a student, you have something as a background, right? You don't come to Canada and then such for something, but you already have some money. So is there anything like that you need? What are the documents you used to provide for getting into Canada's visa or the, you know, course itself? Yeah, um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a process a little bit different in Ghana in terms of the requirements. So the top one is um, you need to first off have a, because I was planning on moving to Canada as a student. Uh -huh. so yeah, first it is you need to have a student visa, like if student work permit and a student, a student yeah. visa are sensible to the app. And for that application, you're required to first off, we have a school that is with, like, you know, master, but received admission to a university in Canada. Okay. And it has to be, I think, accredited also as well. And then on top of that, there was like a request for um, the um, the base, the letter of interest, like the study plan, you know, okay. the study plan. And then it was a big SOP, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's in a study plan. They call it, it's a listed one. That was almost, so that one was in the university, but uh -huh. the embassy also wanted a plan. Yeah, I think for, yeah, that's, you know, what you'll be reading and you'll be going to. Well, you be, yeah, that's one, yeah. Okay. So you need to submit something like that. But I think the bigger emphasis was on like the financial was like, you need to present a few like bank statements. Yes. And so it like, we don't have the, um, the trust that you mentioned. Yeah. Like we didn't have that, but it was like, you still needed to have that. And then these, um, those, um, letter of recommendations from the university. So from a documentation, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So those were the things that we had. And I think in terms of like timeline, it varies, right? Like it, it varies, but it was like, I would say 
within six, seven months. Good to day, yeah. Okay. Since you applied for university and till you get your visa degree, the year after they have the money, yeah. Okay. So you guys have any uh, uh, SES, uh, which means uh, student merit scheme, which is like uh, we get it, you get the student visa a bit quicker and then the ideal process. You have that kind of number uh, of world. So we have actually two categories: there's years and non-SDS. So usually, I think there are very few countries which qualify for SDS. Uh, so and it becomes much easier as a student if you want to apply in SDS, and your visa gets a bit quicker. Mm. Rather than going into that whole different uh, kind of yeah. queue, in course into a different queue, and even the process is a bit easier. So. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we had that in Ghana. Okay. At least when I was applying, but there's been a lot of significant changes in like yeah. the visa application process, even from like Ghana to Canada. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know what the system is now, but I don't I don't think we have such a pathway when I was applying because I think we really just we have was do you want to do paper or do you want to do online? I did paper. Let's just say I would not recommend. <laughs> but <laughs> I think my education world on the time. <laughs> The next day, there's a long word that I had to wait. Yeah. But again, yeah. So, when you come to your course? About 2017, 20, so I moved here 8th September 2017. Okay. Yeah. So, you completed your course in two years and then uh, you year and a half, actually. Year and a half, yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah. So, I did a bit of a fast track. I did a few more core courses than I, sh- I should have. I would not recommend again. But, <laughs> but yeah. It's going to be intense. I mean, it was very intense. Yeah. Combining that with like a part-time job and stuff. Oh my, very hectic. Yeah. So what's your course? I mean, uh, is the course really, are you fully like to get a job or like uh, you did your own uh, kind of uh, research and you started uh, putting on kids skills by yourself or like did professors help you on some, uh, you know, like how was your course for a while? I mean, how you turned it into a like, really good job in the industry or like? So this one thing that I, I always tell people is like, um, so the university education is like, I think of it more as like a way of learning to work with different people. Like yeah. that is the core of the key, the skill that you're getting from university education that will be most beneficial for you in your future is like the ability to just work with different personalities and you like just pick up on things pretty quickly and all that stuff. So in terms of the course material, I mean, I'll be in a totally different industry now, but there's you will still need to relearn a lot yeah. you know, after getting a degree because every company has to all way of doing this and differentiates them. So they'll not be just doing it the same way that they teach in a class, right? So there's still the need to relearn. But the big end beneficiary from like, um, from the benefit from like university education for me was the whole group of friends that I built when I was there. Okay. And I had a group of friends who were like super smart guys and I, I spent a lot of time just like, they like we we'll do a lot of things together in terms of learning and like doing our assignments and everything together. So that was like super awful. We party together and we studied together, which is really nice. And on top of it all, it's like these core group of friends were like very helpful. We were like we banded together, we we're supporting each other all through our job search processes and whatnot. So for me, looking back on USC, what I see is like my ability to um, work with different people from different cultures. Like that was where the, that core skill was built, which to think is like very, like I use it in my day job pretty much every time. So that for me was like the biggest one. Yeah. But like in terms of the, the skills, the stuff that I learned again, I mean, consultants, so it's yeah, like, I'm doing something different every day. So it's like very difficult to be like, I learned this in school and I'm using it now. Like, no, nah, I don't get over a lot of that. <laughs> What's the thing? So, since you are from oil and gas, and uh, since you have mentioned there are very few universities uh, which uh, actually look for oil and gas kind of thing, so uh, what are the opportunities in Newfoundland and in Canada as well? Like after the oil and gas, like uh, since uh, I understand it's, it's slightly controversial when it comes to oil and gas because you know uh, few people are here in, like controversy towards environment. Uh, so, you know what are the opportunities lies? Is it going to increase you see it in the forward uh, when you project it? Oh, well, <clears throat> it's overall like oil and gas industry is this for a reason, right? And we use a product that we need to part world. And I think the world, everybody got a bit of a feel for what happened when the Ukraine crisis, um, unfortunately, the situation in Ukraine happened, like took place where we saw like the demand in oil and gas, supply in oil and gas, like 
just abruptly being shut because Russia like was no longer exporting oil and gas, which led to an increase in demand, which we all experienced the high prices in energy costs and all that stuff. So definitely there is a demand for the product. Although there is like a conscientious effort to switch to a more sustainable energy, which I'm really supportive of, but it's a more of a transition than just, hey, let's lift that shit, let's pop oil and gas and it's from that wake up, it's not gonna happen over there. So the cable or whatever, right? And the oil and gas companies have a very key role to play in that transition as well. So there is still a demand for oil and gas. And what is happening now is like the oil and gas jobs have changed significantly than they used to operate back in 2007-ish when the oil is trading at like $100 per barrel and stuff. Yeah. So the jobs have really like, have changed a lot. So oil and gas companies are involved pushing more towards efficiency. So there is such a huge demand for tech savvy oil and gas engineers to so like you're using a lot of like technologies like AI, there's a lot of like analytics in the operations now. So there is still demand. It just may look a little bit different than it did a few years back. So if if someone wants to pursue a degree in oil and gas, obviously like you should spend a lot of time trying to understand the industry as a whole and the different like aspects of it and the different like forces that I thought like forces that the industry operates within at the moment. And yeah, like I mean, I'm no longer in oil and gas. So like job. <laughs> <laughs> But looking out, well, the I would say um, there is still demand and it's just a little bit different. So maybe there may be some need for you to add on a few extra skills and just your ability to, to determine the flow rates of oil and gas. Happy with the reservoirs, if that makes sense. 